For what purpose does a gentleman from California seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 7777 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 7 a bill to amend the Homeland Security Act of 2002 to authorize the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency to establish an industrial control system, cybersecurity training initiative, and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from California, Mr. Swalwell, and the gentlewoman from Iowa, Mrs. Miller Meeks, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and, ex and re extend the remarks and to include extraneous material on this measure. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentlemen, is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the chairman and ranking member of the Committee on Homeland Security for their support for moving my bill, H.R. 7777, the Industrial Control Systems Cybersecurity Training Act, through committee. And I want to thank the speaker and majority leader for bringing this measure to the floor today. Madam Speaker, H.R. 7777 is not only a winning number on a slot machine, it's a winning formula for bringing cyber hygiene to our industrial control systems across America. Every day, we rely on critical infrastructure to power our homes, fuel our cars, and connect us online. One essential component of critical infrastructure is industrial control systems, also known as ICS, which digitally manages operations of these vital systems. As Congress considers legislation to address cybersecurity threats to America's interests, my legislation would help to secure vulnerable ICS at every level of our economy and our government. H.R. 7777 would make permanent an existing education initiative within the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA. This initiative, the ICS Training Initiative, provides free virtual and in-person cybersecurity training to public and private security entities, including critical infrastructure administrators, national laboratories, and even small businesses. This training equips technology professionals across all levels with the tools and expertise necessary to secure themselves against advanced, persistent threats. When threats turn into successful attacks, it impacts the lives of our of daily, the daily lives of every American, including sowing discord into our electoral processes, as we've seen election after election, shutting down our pipelines, or breaking down supply chains that provide essential food and other materials. That means virtually everything is connected to a network has a potential vulnerability, or what we would refer to as a left of boom vulnerability, the vulnerability that exists before the attack occurs. And every person, small business, or government database is a potential target. In 2021 alone, cyber crimes inflicted approximately $6 trillion and damages across the world. Attacks on industrial networks account for a significant portion of that number, and it's only going to get worse in the future. These threats often emerge from sophisticated state actors like Russia and China that have the ability to exploit vulnerabilities to disrupt and destroy the systems that make our way of life po possible. As Putin and his regime become increasingly isolated because of a successful sanctions regime and the effort that we are prosecuting to help keep Ukraine in the fight, we should expect the Kremlin to progressively target the United States and our allies with unconventional cyber attacks on our election systems and critical infrastructure. And any success that Russia has in exploiting vulnerabilities will inevitably be closely watched by other countries, particularly China. In sum, we know this threat is real and that malignant actors will persistently probe our systems to find additional weaknesses to exploit that would cause real harms, harms to Americans that would blunt innovation, steal American secrets, and destroy America's small businesses. In my district, cybersecurity professionals deal with threats to ICS every single day. I specifically note two major federal research centers, Sandia and Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, which play a critical role in protecting against worldwide cyber threats, and they are in the heart of my district in Livermore, California. 
This support is leveraged every day by numerous federal agencies, including CISA, who sit on the front lines of protecting our infrastructure from bad actors. So here in Congress, we must do everything we can to equip our security protectors with the resources they need to continue the fight. And that's what this legislation does. Resources must include proactive ways to help cybersecurity-focused entities retain a competitive workforce. The training programs in my legislation will equip technology professionals with the skills, expertise, and resources they need to build resilience against threats to some of our most sensitive facilities. I applaud CISA for creating these trainings, which HR 7777, which I love saying, would make permanent. This common sense program is an easy solution to build resilience against cyber attacks for our most vulnerable systems. With that, I urge my House colleagues to support this legislation, and Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, a gentlewoman from Iowa is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. I rise today in support of H.R. 7777, the Industrial Controls System Cybersecurity Training Act. In policy discussions following recent cyber incidents like solar winds and Colonial Pipeline, one constant area of concern to Congress and our cyber defenders, like those of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, has been improving the nation's workforce pipeline for cybersecurity and other STEM-related fields. As the interconnectivity of our daily lives continues to grow, the estimated worldwide cost of cybercrime has risen to $6 trillion annually. Despite this alarming and growing threat, some estimates say that the cybersecurity workforce is currently short about one to three million qualified professionals. A recent Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, study of IT decision makers across eight countries found 82% of employers report a shortage of cybersecurity skills, and 71% believe this talent gap causes direct and measurable damage to their organization. Federal agencies have been working to bridge the gap in skills required to prepare a future cyber workforce. CISA is collaborating closely with organizations like the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, to identify cyber knowledge deficits on a sector-by-sector -sector basis. One example is the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education Framework, which serves as a useful precursor for directing federal resources into education and research priorities. H.R. 7777 would require that CISA provide resources for the purpose of training cyber operators that are fluent across multiple segments of the cyber domain, not only information technology, but also operational technology, like manufacturing systems and industrial control systems, which are commonplace within critical infrastructure sectors and are increasingly exposed to cyber risk. We must continue to do all we can to improve our nation's cyber posture and focus on policy that can help make our government and private sector critical infrastructure operations more resilient and prepared for future events. I urge members to join me in supporting H.R. 7777, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen, does a gentleman, does a gentlewoman from Myra reserve? I yield back the balance of my time. She yields back. Gentleman from uh, California is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I have no more speakers, and I am prepared to close. The gentleman is, has the only time remaining. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself the balance of my time and, and appreciate the, the bipartisan cooperative effort here to make sure that our cyber professionals across America are ready to meet the growing threats from Russia, China, and even non-state cyber actors, and that's exactly what H.R. 7777 seeks to do by authorizing CISA's ICS cybersecurity training program and directing CISA to report to Congress annually about the initiative. Improving the state of our ICS cybersecurity workforce will be an ongoing effort, and these reports will help Congress continue to strengthen this program in the future. Passing this bill will help us continue moving forward in developing the cybersecurity workforce we need to defend against the growing cyber threats that we face. And in particular, this will help strengthen small businesses, particularly those in critical infrastructure who do not yet today have cybersecurity defense forces receive that training. With that, I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 7777, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the 
Bill HR 7777 as amended. Those in favor say A. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds being in the affirmative. For what purposes does the gentleman for seek recognition? Request the yeas and nays. Pursuant to Section 3S of House Resolution 8, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question are postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill, H.R. 7174, as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 287, H.R. 7174, a bill to amend the Homeland Security Act of 2002 to reauthorize the National Computer Forensics Institute of United States Secret Service and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from California, Mr. Swalwell, and the gentlewoman from Iowa, Mrs. Miller Meeks, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and to include extraneous material on this measure. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support of H.R. 7174, the National Computer Forensics Institute Reauthorization Act of 2022, introduced in this House by Ms. Slotkin of Michigan. Ms. Slotkin's legislation addresses ransomware threats that are on the rise, and they are costing American companies and the American people millions of dollars each year. In fact, Former Cisco CEO John Chambers estimates that in the year 2022, we will see approximately $120,000 on average in cost to 60,000 American businesses who will be victims of ransomware attacks. Ransomware attacks have targeted our most critical industries from the energy sector to food processing to schools and even hospitals. State and local law enforcement are on the front lines of protecting against this threat and often are the first people called when an attack occurs, and they are on the ground in communities to respond. Recently, FBI Director Chris Wray told Congress that within an hour, if a business calls the FBI, one of his agents can respond, either virtually or at their doorstep, to assist them. More than ever, state and local law enforcement need the training and tools to investigate and respond to ransomware and other cyber-based attacks. That's where the National Computer Forensics Institute, or NCFI comes in. Established in 2008 by the U.S. Secret Service, NCFI is recognized as a preeminent federal facility for state and local law enforcement to receive cybersecurity training. At NCFI, the Secret Service trains state, local, tribal, and territorial officers, prosecutors, and judges in cybercrime investigations and cyber incident response. To date, because of this training, more than 18,000 law enforcement officers prosecutors and judges across all 50 states and territories have received training at NCFI's center in Hoover, Alabama. Ms. Slotkin's HR 7174, as introduced, would reauthorize NCFI through 2032. Like many of my colleagues here in Congress, I began my career as a prosecutor, and I know the importance of training for law enforcement, prosecutors, and judicial officers. Before a case ever reaches the trial stage, Dozens of law enforcement officers, investigators, and attorneys have poured over shreds of evidence to ensure justice is served. Since evidence today is increasingly di digital and more and more meticulous to review, it's imperative that law enforcement, prosecutors, and judicial officers from communities across the country have access to necessary training on emerging and digital technologies like AI and equipment to put that training in action. That's what Ms. Slotkin's bill will do. H.R. 7174 will ensure the NCFI's operation for 10 more years and better position the Institute for success. The bill strengthens its operations by requiring privacy, civil rights, and civil liberty protections be integrated into the training. It authorizes the NCFI to engage in research and development of different approaches for training and investigations involving ransomware and threats involving the use of emerging digital assets and it requires the Secret Service Director to report on the demand for training at NCFI. 
the Institute's ability to meet that demand, and, what, and whether to expand further NCFI facilities and training opportunities. NCFI's authority to continue its training will end in November of this year, but we know that cyber actors, nation state and non-nation state, their efforts will not, which makes HR 7174's swift passage so important. The House authorized the NCFI by an overwhelmingly bipartisan vote in the 115th Congress, and the Homeland Security Committee passed this bipartisan bill by unanimous vote, by voice, last month. It has 17 bipartisan co-sponsors. I urge my colleagues to support the measure once again. Madam Speaker, I request unanimous consent to include in the record an exchange of letters between the Chairman of the Committees on the Judiciary and Homeland Security regarding consideration of Ms. Lotkin's H.R. 7174. Without objection. Thank you. Again, I urge swift passage of Ms. Lotkin's legislation. And Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentlewoman from Iowa is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. I rise today in support of H.R. 7174, the National Computer Forensics Institute Reauthorization Act. Our nation is facing an increase in cyber threats stemming from multiple angles. These range from critical infrastructure vulnerabilities to child exploitation online. Previous cyber attacks have highlighted the need for preventative measures and law enforcement support at every level, including federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial. Many recent attacks and exploited vulnerabilities have severely impacted the American people and economy. Adding to this, with the ongoing war in Ukraine, the intelligence community is warning of the heightened cyber threat from Russia. The National Computer Forensic Institute in Hoover, Alabama is operated by the United States Secret Service. NCFI provides essential education and training to state, local, tribal, and territorial law enforcement, prosecutors, and judges on how to mitigate, detect, and respond to cyber threats. Since opening in 2008, NCFI has continuously worked to equip its students with the necessary tools and knowledge needed to prevent cyber crime. Now more than ever, as we are facing cyber attacks from malicious actors like Russia, China, and Iran, in addition to other criminal behavior online like child pornography, bolstering child cyber training and tools for our law enforcement partners is imperative. Congress officially authorized the NCFI for five years in 2017. This bill reauthorizes NCFI for 10 years and updates its mission, function, and curriculum. In addition, the bill requires an annual report on NCFI's impact and activities. It requires analysis for its potential expansion and a process to receive feedback from participating jurisdictions. Cybersecurity has never been more important to Homeland Security, and it's pivotable that we train our state and local law enforcement to address this threat and other online nefarious activities head on. I urge members to join me in supporting H.R. 7174, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields back. The gentleman from uh, California is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have no more speakers, and I am prepared to close. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself the balance of my time, and as stated, uh, NCFI training and education program is too important to expire. It will do so in November. I appreciate the gentlelady from Iowa and her side's support for this legislation. And with that, I urge, my pass, I urge swift passage of H.R. 7174 and yield back. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 7174 as amended? Those in favor say A. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Request the yeas and nays. The rule... Pursuant to Section 3S of House Resolution 8, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question is postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill, H.R. 5274. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union Calendar Number 286, H.R. 5274 a bill to amend the Homeland Security Act of 2002 to provide training for United States Customs and Border Protection personnel 
on the use of containment devices to prevent secondary exposure to fentanyl and other potentially lethal substances and for other purposes. Sir, to the rule of the gentleman from California, Mr. Swalwell, and the gentlewoman from Iowa, Mrs. Miller Meeks, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and to include extraneous material on this measure. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentlemen, is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 5274, the Prevent Exposure to Narcotics and Toxics Act. It's introduced by my friend and colleague, Representative Joyce of Ohio. I see that he's here, and so to let him speak on his bill, and then I'll follow up shortly, I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and for now, I'll reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves it. Gentlewoman from Iowa is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself as I may. I rise today in support of H.R. 5274, the Prevent Exposure to Narcotics and Toxics Act, introduced by my friend and colleague, David Joyce. This bill addresses the important issue of protecting our frontline customs and border protection personnel from the dangerous and illicit drugs they encounter every day. This is especially important as the situation at our southern border continues to worsen by the day under this administration. In fiscal year 2021, Customs and Border Protection officers and agents seized more than 914,000 pounds of illicit narcotics, and so far this fiscal year, CBP is on track to seize a similar amount of illegal drugs. Unfortunately, in 2019, the Department of Homeland Security's Office of the Inspector General issued a report that found CBP personnel were not adequately protected and were at greater risk of secondary exposure while handling illicit drugs such as fentanyl and methamphetamine. CBP frontline personnel often work in challenging and dangerous environments as they risk exposure to these illicit drugs via inhalation, ingestion, skin contact, and contact with needles. H.R. 5274 will require the CBP commissioner to issue containment devices, which are critical tools that provide protection against secondary exposure to fentanyl and other chemicals to help protect our frontline officers and agents. I strongly encourage all members to support this bill to protect our dedicated frontline law enforcement at the border. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'll reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentlewoman from Iowa is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield three minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Joyce. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, with one, over 108,000 Americans dying from a drug overdose last year, all of us are uniquely aware of what the opioid crisis is ravaging our country. Similarly, Americans have watched that the crisis at our southern border has turned into outright catastrophe. There's a threat that both these crises pose, and it's gone unaddressed for far too long, secondary exposure to fentanyl. Secondary exposure occurs when an individual is unintentionally exposed to fentanyl and the drug enters the bloodstream through accidental absorption. This happened in my home state of Ohio. A police officer overdosed after brushing fentanyl off his uniform following the arrest of a drug dealer. The threat of secondary exposure is consistently faced by one group in particular, Customs and Border Protection agents. CBP officers have seized over 340,000 pounds of drugs this fiscal year, including 5,300 pounds of fentanyl. That's enough to kill 2.4 billion people. So today I'm calling on my colleagues to pass my bill to better protect those working to secure our borders, H.R. 5274, the Prevent Exposure to Narcotics and Toxics Act. Known as the Prevent Act, my bill would require CBP to issue containment devices to all front line border security personnel and provide training on their proper use. Congress already requires CBP to provide Narcan, Narcan to all officers at risk of secondary exposure, making this legislation a simple but necessary extension of the tools we provide those who defend our borders. Containment devices are a critical safety technology that allows first responders to safely store fentanyl and other dangerous substances in a secure device. They not only protect agents from secondary exposure, but also better preserve narcotics for forensic analysis, improving the integrity of investigations and the chances of further legal action against the traffickers. The crisis at our southern border has exploded to an unprecedented levels, and with it we've seen a shocking rise in the amount of fentanyl flowing into the United States. 
While those of us in Congress may differ in how we believe this crisis should be solved, we can agree that the men and women working to stop deadly drugs from reaching our communities deserve to be protected on the job. The PREVENT Act provides them with that protection. Madam Speaker, I'm proud to have introduced this bill and will always have the backs of the CBP agents working to keep our country safe. These men and women put their lives on the line every day. The least Congress can do is ensure they have what they need to do their jobs as safely as possible. Thank you. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume, and I want to thank my colleague uh, across the aisle, Mr. Joyce, a, a former uh, prosecutor, someone who understands the importance of having the backs of law enforcement as they're on the front lines and, and dealing with this uh, deadly, deadly toxin. Uh, and I, too, want to commend uh, CBP for the hard work that they do every single day and the drugs that they're interdicting to protect our communities. Uh, no doubt, fentanyl and other toxins have taken thousands of American lives. Uh, and I can speak personally that uh, in my family, we have uh, seen uh, a family member suffer through a fentanyl addiction. And uh, if I could wave a wand and get rid of all the fentanyl in the world, I would do it. Mr. Joyce's legislation uh, make sure that we're not exposing more people unnecessarily to it. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimate that 107,000 drug overdose deaths occurred in 2021, which is an increase of nearly 15 percent from 2020. And most of these originate overseas, uh, primarily uh, from China, who is not doing enough to stop the fentanyl leaving its borders. But the heroes of U.S. Customs and Border Protection interdict and seize opioids and other illicit drugs at our borders before they make their way into American communities. And we know that their exposure is extremely dangerous and could be fatal. When detecting or seizing op opioids, frontline CBP personnel are at high risk of exposure to these substances through in inhalation, ingestion, and skin contact. One way to prevent accidental contact is through Mr. Joyce's legislation that would provide the use of containment devices. This legislation protects CBP officers and agents by ensure, ensuring that those at risk of exposure have access to containment devices and, most importantly, understand how to use them. Last Congress, this body enacted Congresswoman Yvette Clark's Synthetic Opioid Exposure Prevention and Training Act to protect CBP personnel from exposure to synthetic opioids. That law required CBP to implement a safety framework to protect its personnel from exposure to potential synthetic opioids. We also enacted Congressman Clay Higgins' DHS Opioid Detection Resilience Act to ensure CBP implements a strategy to detect synthetic opioids at lower purity levels. Together, these measures responded to concerns raised by the Department of Homeland Security's Office of Inspector General about the risk of accidental narcotics exposure to frontline CBP personnel. Consideration of H.R. 5274 is particularly timely as CBP's fentanyl seizures continue to increase. I request also, Madam Speaker, unanimous consent to include in the record an exchange of letters between the Chairman of the Committees of Ways and Means and Homeland Security regarding consideration of H.R. 5274. And with that, I urge my colleagues Without to support objection. Mr. Sorry, thank you. With that, I, I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 5274 and reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, the gentlewoman from Iowa is recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, certainly, H.R. 5274 is a small step that we can take in managing the crisis of our southern border, uh, in addition to emphasizing border secu uh, security. And I want to thank Representative Joyce for his very astute observation that our law enforcement is at risk and for his bill to help protect those who protect and serve us. I have no further speakers, and I urge members to support this bill. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlewoman yields back. The gentleman from California is recognized. Madam Speaker, I have no more speakers, and I'm prepared to close. The gentleman is recognized. I yield myself the balance of my time. And again, I just thank Mr. Joyce. I thank the other side for their bipartisan interest in this legislation. And as I said, uh, as the son of a police officer, a brother, uh, to a number of police officers. Uh, we're a law enforcement family, and I see uh, every day and hear from my family about the exposure they face, uh, particularly those on the southern border, and seek swift passage of this legislation. And I yield back. I think the question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 5274? Those in favor say aye. 
Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds being in the affirmative. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Request the A's and A's. Pursuant to Section 3S of House Resolution 8, the A's and A's are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question are postponed. The gentlewoman from Georgia seek recognition.